tell we're working on this box on. Uh, some of you don't agree with keeping a box on in a pot because it's a noxious weed, but for me, I'm going to be working on it and just see how she goes. So you remember back, I ripped this one out with the ute um, a fair while ago. Um, I'll roll some footage of that now, we hope. Hang on. Need a beer for this one. Grab a beer. No mucking around here. Send me pulling it out with the ute. Um, she's got a few flowers on here as well, which is pretty cool. Very, very spiky. I'll show you a couple of the, show you how big these spikes do get. Just cut a couple off and show you. But anyway, this um, tree here today, basically, we're just going to do a full work on it, so it's going to be a big, big video, but I'm not going to record the whole lot because I'm out here on a really crappy winter's day. It's blowing a gale, threatening to rain at times. Um, like even this, that's a, that's a full spike. Wow. But anyway, uh, it's threatening to rain at times. So I'm in here working on this and I'm just going to, it's going to be a lot of work. I've got to do a lot of stuff to it and I'll run you through what I've got to do with it. Um, massive tree, extremely heavy, really heavy. And also, it's trying to pop out of its pot, but you can see all the new roots everywhere through here. So it's rooted up pretty well. Um, what else? Box thorn as a species, well, to be honest, I haven't worked with them for long enough to really know what they're like for bonsai. Um, in general, they have thin, straight trunks uh, without taper. Um, but this one here has actually got a bit of interest, a bit of movement, and it's not bad. So that's one thing. Um, so straight trunks generally. But another thing I've noticed is they'll grow out and then they drop all their leaves, even if they're getting water, drop all their leaves, even though the roots are healthy. And then they'll shoot back. Then they'll grow for a bit and then they'll drop all their leaves again. Nothing real bad happens to it. It's, it seems to be just how they grow. They just grow for a bit and drop everything. Um, so yeah, interesting. It will be interesting too if I can eventually get, I mean, I'm getting flowers, so you would assume I can get berries, but if I can get this nice and compact, um, it'd be really awesome to get red berries all over it too. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So, right, what are we gonna do with this tree? Enough dribbling on? Well, I don't know. I've got no idea what I'm gonna do. I do know I'm going to make it a nice tall tree. 
Um, so this apex up here, I will, I will definitely be keeping. Um, there's a branch at the back with good movement. I haven't even decided whether that's the front, to be honest. I'll give it a spin. So that's the other side. I think that will be the back, what you're looking at now. Um, yeah, I've got to make a couple more decisions, I think. I've got another branch in here that I don't really like. Another branch or two. We'll see. Anyway. So, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to cut back a lot of this foliage just so we can see because eventually we're not keeping all this foliage anyway so I'm just going to chop it all back to you know 10 or 15 centimetre shoots for now maybe um, so we're going to chop back that just so it doesn't stick out and stab me everywhere we've got to carve out all of these dead bits all these stubs and to do that I'm just going to do exactly what I showed you in the dealing with flat cuts so I've got quite a few of those to work with um, there was some strap marks here that ripped off bark when it got pulled out the ground. Not sure whether I'll just leave that like that or whether I'll carve in there, not sure. I'll just do a bit of carving on the wood to see what the wood's actually like. Um, I do have a piece of wood from this tree. I'll just go get it. All right, guys, got me a bit of wood. Now I could polish this up and stain it so I could see the grains better. Best I could make it's you know anywhere from 12 to 20 years old. This box on. And just massive. And I'll tell you what, my back didn't like lifting it either. Alright, so I guess first thing is decide whether there's any big shoots that I need to remove still. When I collected it, I did sort of already decide on a lot of shoots that I will and won't keep. Um, I'm probably not going to leave you guys live for the decision making because I just want to relax in the shed today and just work on the trees. So I'm just going to sit back, look at it, think about it, take my time with it. I'm not going to rush it. I find that if I'm doing a video where I haven't looked at the tree before, I make rash, fast decisions and don't really sit back and look at the whole thing. I'm probably pretty happy with how most of it is. One thing I'm definitely going to take off is this trunk in here. I've just seen that one not great. Let's get rid of that one now um, while you guys are live. six months but that might have been the sun's not sure anyway it doesn't matter right okay guys so there's definitely one here I want to get rid of um, and that's this one here I'm going to try and work out how's the best way to get rid of that I'm going to sort of cut in here
So that's opened up that to the back there. Um, maybe a back branch there. I may think about shortening as well. But like I say, I'm going to get into it, have a good look around. There's the one that I just chopped off. And you guys can just sit back on hyperlapse and I'll talk about it at the end. Cheers, enjoy. I'm going to certainly enjoy myself. I've got oh, possibly eight hours work here. So I'll catch you at the end. and tree inside out the weather so that the uh, buds can open up nice and it's starting to open up see how many buds are on there it's just ridiculous everywhere also I got the hydro light there with the seedlings and they're looking much better out of the tent and in the open air so the seedlings are doing really well Tamarind, Brazilian rain tree, doing okay. Well, good day guys. I thought I would just show you this tool. I just got this tool. It's a multi-cutter tungsten tip blade that goes on an angle grinder. Um, I think it pretty well speaks for itself that it could be extremely dangerous. Um, probably not for most people. Uh, just be really careful, you know. It's going to be extremely dangerous if it catches and takes off somewhere, so just be really careful. So anyway, I've never tried it, so let's give it a go. I'm going to try carving this dead bit here. Probably not really carving it so much as just making a hole in the middle, maybe getting rid of some bark on the outside, create a few, you know, layers to the dead wood. But we'll see how it goes. Um, it's just a bit of an experiment, see what happens. Okay, well, let's see what that's done. Okay, so pretty ugly, but it did get rid of bulk really quick as you would expect. So I might go around and just get rid of some bulk and then go around with the proper carver after and just clean it up and create some hollows with the proper carver. But I think to get rid of some bulk, it's probably not a bad idea. It's decently easy, easy to handle um, because it's got so many cutters on there. It's reasonably smooth, it doesn't try and take off on you like mad. So I'm going to go around the whole tree and just get rid of some bulk 
around the place and then bring in the other carver later. So I'll just get rid of bulk where I can and then the other carver can come in later and do some more work. As you can see we've got heaps and heaps here to clean up. I probably should say I've done some shoot selection, got rid of some at the front. This big one at the back, chop that down, that was way up here. That's chopped down now, so it's chopped off. And then I've got to clean up all these shoots here around the place. All these flat cuts, got rid of another big branch that went across there. Um, but yeah, so let's get into it, let's do the dead wood work and keep on going. Good day guys, well, as you can see, covered in crap again. Uh, well, we've done the angle grinder. We've done the angle grinder on all the stubs, and it actually did work pretty well. I'm pretty excited about how easy it was. The angle grinder did, did get heavy after a while, and I had to grip it pretty hard so it didn't take off. Okay, they're pretty ugly for now, but it did get rid of the bulk in all these spots so that I can now get the other carver out and get some more detail into it. But it did get rid of the bulk, so pretty happy with that. So, alright, pretty well all the bulk's gone. So let's, look at this. Look at that. So let's get the other carver out, the die grinder, and go for that. What a poo day, look at this poor tree. Look at that poor tree. It's just straight on front, straight on it. Trees in the background. Look at it. What a poo poo day. That's alright though. It's alright though, we've got our pot belly going in here and it's nice and warm. Working on the tree. Look at that outside, water running down everywhere. Absolutely pee down. Ooh. Windy as windy out there. Oh my God. Oh, that poor tree, it's just, I keep looking at it, it's getting blown everywhere. Look at the dog's kennel there. 
Bonsai are fairly protected because they got that big high fence, but the shade is getting blown everywhere. You can see that. Man, oh man, I hope it survives. I hope it does. Alright guys, well it's still raining outside. Done some burning of the deadwood, as you can see. All these stubs everywhere. Everywhere I mean everywhere. So you can see all this deadwood now, all these stubs that have been cleaned up and burnt and carved. Hours and hours and hours. I think I counted about 28 okay that one's a bit dodgy see that damn it i'm gonna have to go back in there damn it anyway i think i counted about 28 bits of dead wood here so pretty cool it's so one way to finish off all your dead cut stubs is to carve them, put some lines in them and burn them. And you can see you end up with something, you know, half natural looking. Half natural looking. Okay guys, time for the wire. I'm only going to wire out the first initial bit of branching. And they're very stiff. They could break very easily. Some of these big and heavy ones up the top, I already can't bend, so... See what happens. I only want to really hint in the general direction of pushing them out. They don't have to do you know 90 degree bends or anything crazy they just have to go in the sort of general direction of where I want them to go and then I will shorten them back a bit further so here we go let's put some wire on put them in a general direction um, there'll be no crazy movement because they're very very stiff branches and they break easy good night guys well here you go Grab that number from Adrian. Grab it now because you are about to see his turntable in action. And I think you guys, if you don't have one, should get one because I absolutely love it. Nigel Saunders has one also. Um, that was custom made for Nigel Saunders, the bonsai zone. But here we have. The tree approaching, I don't know, 60 odd kilo, maybe more, maybe 80, who knows? And this is Adrian Eagleton's turntable, and let's try it out on that tree. Just lift her up one side, put her underneath. A bit further. That's it. So we're on Adrian Eggleton's turntable. The tree handles even a big tree like that, no worries at all. Now I'm going to work it up.
Exactly. Look at that. Bloody beauty. She's a good turntable. Anyway, let's get to the tree. So, this tree, obviously, is a box on. We've been working on it all day. Done all the carving. Been out here since 9 a.m. It's about 4 p.m. Is it, Seth? Object was fine. Must be nearly 4 p.m. So it's nearly seven hours. Yes, 4:54. 4:54. And what time did I come out? About nine. Nine. Nine thirty. Maybe. So three. Well, close to eight hours, guys. Very close to eight hours. Now, what we did was we did some selection of shoots. Um, show you what I've cut off if I can. That'll be a painful thing to show. That'll be a painful thing to show you guys. But that's why we cut off this tree. Woo wee! That is painful. You know you could have just picked up your bin and showed them. I don't know, that was painful though, Seth. You're a bit silly. I am a bit silly, aren't I? Uh-huh. So that's how much we cut off. Done with the carving. Um, I showed you guys we had close to 30 stubs. 28 or so stubs that we had to clean up, carve out, do a little bit of detail work to, and then burn them off, get rid of the fur. I'm going to let these naturally weather away and see what happens. I'm not going to treat them with anything at all. So they've been burnt and that's it. I'm just going to let them naturally weather away. And if in two or three years time I think they look pretty good, then I'll treat them with wood hardener or super glue or something like that. But for now, I just want them to naturally, you know, weather away and see how they go. Um, what else? Uh, also, I started wiring some of the branches out just to give a bit of a hint of where they need to aim. And I ran into problems pretty quick, like even a branch like this one here does not want to bend and all it does is crack. It's funny, it cracks. So I'm trying to show you guys. It doesn't really crack in half. Well, that one there is actually quite flexible but what happens okay it doesn't actually do a real break as such it just twists and then you see it a split form in the middle of the twig which is not ideal um, so I decided right that's it a couple of the major ones that did need movement out here bottom there I forced a bit of movement into them, but areas where I don't think it needs movement in that short little stub, I decide just to cut it back to a short stub and then as it shoots out, it'll pull it pull out and create a really full nice tree on its own without having to wire it. So I just wired stuff that definitely needs to be wired. Um, so yeah, there you have it. That's it, the box saw. It's got a stead one, it's got all the shoots. Um, what I will do is I'll take a photo and put it on the photo editor and just put a few green canopies on it maybe. Maybe I'll do that. I'll put a few green canopies on just to show you what guys where I think this tree will be headed in the long run. Um, I'm actually really, really excited about where it's going. Um, I know it's hard to see now for a lot of you guys. 
But for me, I can visualize already where it's going. It's going to be a really nice, really tall tree. And I'm super, super excited. Let's see if today we'll just let this thing keep on developing and we're done. So please like, share, subscribe. And while we're on the subject of subscribing, make sure you guys and girls, if you have not subscribed, even if you're not logged into uh, YouTube, log in. Because what it does, if you subscribe, is it gives you a notification every time I put up a new video. Um, so if you like my channel and you like watching my content, it'll give you a notification straight away if you subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Because more than half of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. And I really appreciate everyone that is subscribed. And who knows, one day I might give a subscriber giveaway. And I'm certainly not going to give it to someone that only just subscribed. I'm going to give it to a long time subscriber. So anyway, that's it. Give me a spin now. And then we'll have a little bit of a close up of some of the dead wood. Although pretty well they all look the same. Um, I just cleaned up all the stuff exactly like I showed you in that flat, flat cut video. The wind's picking up again, which means it's probably going to rain again. I'm just trying to get this done in between rain squalls. I do love the rain. Subscribe! Come on! Subscribe. Alright. Spin some dead wood. And I'll make sure I do a photo edit and put a few green pads on just to show you what I think this tree will look like in the long run. Cheers, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you, catch you next time. Cheers.